good to see you. Yeah, I'm applauding for you, because you deserve it. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. America's been through a lot in the last year, last week. We're all still trying to wrap our minds around the incidents in Boulder and Atlanta and what should be done in response to this violence. Some are calling on Congress to pass gun control, while others are calling on the NRA to pass the money bucket. Because Republicans are trying the same old cynical trick of switching the subject away from guns to things like mental health or, or video games or, look over there, it's a Dr. Seuss-themed gay wedding cake for the marriage of Pepe Le Pew and Mr. Potato Head. <laughs> but the New York Times looked at the data and they concluded, why does the U.S. have so many mass shootings? The research is clear. Guns. Yes, we have more guns. That's why we lead the world in gun violence. Same way we have more monster trucks, which is why we lead the world in crushing perfectly fine cars for no reason. How many guns, you may ask? The U.S., with about 4.4% of the global population, owns 42% of the world's guns. So if this was a pie chart, we'd have all the pie. And for the record, America does have all the pie. <laughs> And the thing is, the United States is not actually more prone to crime than other developed countries. It's just that because of guns, crime becomes more lethal here. For example, a New Yorker is just as likely to be robbed as a Londoner, but the New Yorker is 54 more times more likely to be killed in the process because in London, it's mostly knife crime. And over there, they hold the knife in the left hand. Our gun violence is different because we have guns. And until that changes, nothing will change. And that won't change until everybody votes. Of course, some people might be unhappy how you vote. And to try to change that, they'll use violence. Case in point, federal prosecutors are now coming down on Capitol rioters like a flagpole-wielding maniac. And I'll tell you all about it in tonight's seditionist Roundup Roundup. You're going to want to steer clear of these moosh bags. Thank you, Bessie. The latest insurrectionist to surrender to the FBI is Sarah Carpenter, who is a former spokesperson for the New York City Police Department. Oh, such a shame. All that great press for the NYPD. Straight down the drain. According to prosecutors, Carpenter was captured on security footage of the riot, festively shaking a tambourine inside the Capitol Rotunda. It was the most festive attempted coup since the czar was deposed by Trotsky with maracas. We don't have the footage yet, but prosecutors say it depicts Carpenter wearing a red hat, green coat, and black boots as she twirls around and shakes the tambourine. It's bad enough that an angry mob is attacking you at your workplace. It's even worse that one of them is doing this. Stop the steal. Stop, stop the steal. Woo! Treason. Treason. Treason is a reason. <laughs> I'm surprised Mike Pence didn't hang himself. So... How did they catch her? Well, apparently, Carpenter was ratted out to the FBI by an anonymous tipster. And is this true? I'm being told we have tape of the tipster. Please, you have to arrest my neighbor. I can't take it anymore. The jangling. It's like a drum, but also like somebody's throwing a bunch of keys into a steel barrel. It's like someone put a coin star machine inside a washing machine. Oh, God, she's going to do a solo. Come quick. After receiving the tip, the FBI called Carpenter in for questioning and later recovered the tambourine. No! Let her go! Arrest the tambourine! Send her to a supermax prisoner! Throw it into Mount Doom! Fun fact. Let's see if it's fun. Carpenter isn't just an ex-cop and current tambourine player. She's also an entrepreneur who invented a special soft, retractable leash with a pocket for waste bags. Presumably for dogs, but also... Handy for cleaning up after her fellow rioters. Because they pooped in the Capitol. Now, what? Just want to make sure everybody understands the reference. It's been a while. Next up. <laughs> Sound loves that. Is this, is this mic on? <laughs> Next up on the Roundup, it's the seditionist Roundup Roundup update. You may remember recently when we profiled rioter Timothy Hale Cusinelli, seen here celebrating New York Fascist Week. This wasn't Hayao Mussolini's first brush with the law because we've since learned he's got a rap sheet dating all the way back to 2010 when he was arrested with a makeshift gun bearing the words, white is right, because he was shooting frozen corn 
at houses in Howell, New Jersey. We should have seen this coming ages ago, just based on those ads. Heil, heil, heil. White power. <laughs> Unbelievable. There's so much to talk about today, but let's, let's get to the big story around the big problem everyone's talking about. The Suez Canal is blocked after a giant container ship got stuck. So it's time for our first ever recurring canal-based alert segment. Suez! Suez! Let's jump right in the water. There she is, the massive grounded vessel, the Ever Given, operated by the shipping company Evergreen, obviously en route to make a vital delivery of late March Christmas trees. <laughs> Situation started yesterday when powerful winds forced the ship aground on one of the canal's banks, blocking nearly the entire width of the canal. I get it. After a year of quarantine, nothing fits anymore. They should have put that ship into their stretchy canal. You know, the one that looks like denim but gives and is smart enough to go from sofa to brunch. I'll give you a sense of how huge these container ships are. This one is as long as New York's Empire State Building is tall. Well, there's your problem. They should have sailed it through upright. Now, you landlubbers out there, ones who don't have hats this nice, probably learned about this story from various shore-based news outlets, but I'm a man of the sea. I'm a salty dog, so I've been tracking this briny pickle from the moment from the moment it began, right here on my marine traffic app, it shows you the real-time location of every registered seafaring vessel on the planet. Jimmy, throw, throw this up on the screen there. Boom! Right there. That is a live picture of the Ever Given blocking the entire canal. Status stopped. Speed zero knots. And when I swipe right, ooh, we're a match. Meet me in the Mediterranean. I'll be wearing a tugboat. Now, I did not imagine when I read in the script that I'd be wearing a hat that I'd be wearing it this long. Take it off. No, I can't take it off. I can't take it off. It says in the script that I've got a hat on. Now, after 150 years, the Suez is still a major shipping route, and there's stern-to-bow traffic throughout the canal, so authorities are trying their best to dislodge the vessel. Here's the full fleet of one bulldozer trying to dig it out. Come on, guys. Couldn't you have sent something smaller? Maybe an old man with a grapefruit spoon or a single prairie dog with tennis elbow? Anyway, that's how things stand. For continued coverage of this tall tale of seaborne woe, stay tuned, because right after a late show, I'll be heading over to Paramount Plus for my other job as a global maritime traffic reporter. We got everything. Straight talk. The poor rapport, and of course, my special Panama dispatch, a man plan a canal analysis. Now, not all the waterway news out there is bad. In fact, some of it is downright adorable. Yesterday, dolphins were spotted swimming in New York City's East River. That is so cool, though probably a bit of a confusing day for New York City's mobsters. Don't worry, boss. Little Gino Two Fingers is swimming with the fishes. Well, technically, dolphins are mammals, but he loves swimming with them. Got a boop one right on the nose. Never seen the guy so happy. He said you could really sense their intelligence. You know, really made a connection. All in all, a great day for little Gino Two Fingers. You wanted us to do what? <laughs> Hat back on. The marine mammals in question were spotted yesterday morning swimming near Greenpoint, Brooklyn, which explains why they were drinking cans of Old Style and talking about ethically sourced coffee. <laughs> Gotta say, it's, it's pretty incredible to see a dolphin in the Big Apple, or as one New Yorker put it. I mean, a dolphin, man. Okay, that sounds like salty talk, but in fact, he's just using the scientific name for this type of porpoise, a dolphin. Now you know why the name of the show was Flipper. <laughs> Speaking of mammals, women. It's true, you can look it up. March is Women's History Month. It's just like Men's History Month, but it buttons the other way for some reason. Every year, corporations try to find ways to honor women with their products. For instance, Mattel released a special edition Eleanor Roosevelt Barbie, which gives young girls the opportunity to celebrate Eleanor Roosevelt and Eleanor Roosevelt the opportunity to defeat Voltron. Also, 
Hershey celebrated Women's History Month by releasing a batch of limited edition Hershey's bars. Of course, come April, they have to go back to selling their traditional masculine him he bars. But Hershey's isn't the only product pandering to women by rebranding or repand her ing. Jim? They say it's a man's world, but you're thriving in it. And after a long day shattering glass ceilings, you work up an appetite. That's why, in honor of Women's History Month, we're introducing Hungry Man Dinners for Women. Because strong, powerful women deserve strong, powerful meals. Now you can enjoy your girl dinner anywhere a man can. At the job site, in the boardroom, or most likely, while standing over the sink. And check out new feminist flavors like Homestyle Meatloaf Et, Honey Baked Ma'am, and Susan Beef Anthony. Whoa, man. And sure, the food is exactly the same as regular Hungry Man, a mixture of protein and chemicals pressed together in the shape of meat. But that's not pandering. That's respect, which is also a word we stuck on the box. So sister, after a long day of empowerment, unbutton your pants, do that cool trick where you slip off your brassiere through your shirt, and get your lady teeth working on some Hungry Man Dinners for Women. Because even though you make 75% of a man's salary, you deserve 100% of his meal. And 200% of recommended daily serving of saturated fat. We got a great show for you tonight. I'll be talking to Sharon Stone, but when we come back, I reveal this year's hottest Easter cards with a surprise guest. It's my wife, Evie. Stick around.